everyone, it's Jessica with Sassy Goat Soaps. Hope y'all are having a wonderful day. Today I'm bringing you along on my journey of making tobacco and bay leaf. This is going to be part of my Salty Seaside Escape Summer Collection. And this one is for the men. Now mind you, I am not like all about this gender stuff that saying you can't say men, you can't say women for sense. Feminine, masculine. I know there's been a lot of talk I've seen on some of the soaping Facebook groups about people not wanting to gender their soaps or whatnot. And that's fine. That's great. But to be honest with you, I have people every week ask me, what are your scents for men? Or do you have feminine scents? Or do you have, you know, masculine scents? And it's men and women both. So while I do make men soaps, I also make feminine soaps. Uh, it doesn't mean that if you're a woman, you can't buy a manly soap because I love my detox soap. It's a, my one of my men's soaps. And I've had men that come up and buy lavender soap for themselves. But me, being in the South, and just my clientele, I still classify. I have a men's group, and this soap falls into my men's group. And it is absolutely wonderful. It is tobacco and bay leaf from Brambleberry. And the notes on here says discolors to tan in cold process and behaves well in cold process. Um, this just smells amazing. It's got a little bit of like a leather, a little bit of musk, bright green notes, almost like when you're driving late August in eastern North Carolina and so tobacco's coming up. You've got these flowery, herbal, spicy, musky, leathery, with the hint of citrus, that's exactly what this smells like. So for me, this reminds me, if you're from North Carolina or ever been anywhere, that there's tobacco fields. What a tobacco field when it's about prime time smells like. It's absolutely wonderful. And this soap, keeping with the salt theme, I am going to be using some spinach powder to color it. I'm keeping it kind of natural. I've added some French green clay for the detoxing benefits. Again, I try to make all of my soaps with good healthy benefits. I'm adding collodial oatmeal, which I'm going to add right now. Collodial oatmeal is really good for soothing skin. Um, people often who have dry skin or eczema or things like that can benefit, I'm not making any medical claims, I'm just saying they can benefit from collodial oatmeal. You can Google the benefits of collodial oatmeal and you can see for yourself, but it's known to be soothing. So right here I just have my butters and oils that I put together and melted last night. Sorry, I thought I saw something floating in there, but I'm just imagining things. I'm going to add my fresh goat's milk. This is 50-50. I have half my water for my last solution and half of it in goat's milk. And I find that this, this is how I've been soaping for years. It works perfect. I still get all the wonderful benefits of the goat milk doing it this way. I mean, this is... This is a five pound batch and I'm so I've got right at nine ounces of goat milk. Still a good bit of goat milk in here, enough to get the benefits. So I'm gonna give this a quick blend. tell you enough how amazing this tobacco and bay leaf smells. Sorry, I gotta get my gloves. But I'm going to also to this soap for some gentle exfoliant. I'm going to be adding Hawaiian black salt. Hawaiian black salt has got amazing benefits. Um, comes from Hawaii. Uh, it's a lava. It also mixes with the lava particles, the activated charcoal. Um, so you get a little, you get the detoxification from the charcoal, you get the gentle exfoliation from the black, the salt, 
and you get the minerals from the salt. So I'm going to be adding this into the soap. I'm going to bring it to like medium thick trays so I can add this so it doesn't sink to the bottom so the batter can suspend the salt. And that's going to do it. So we've got the milk in there, the colloidal oatmeal in there. I'm going to go ahead and add my lye. I did make this yesterday, so it's got a little bit of lye lint. So I'm going to strain it. I'm just giving this lye a quick stir because I do use salt and sugar and some things have seemed to have settled to the bottom. I'm just making sure everything gets back incorporated. I'm also going to be using this tobacco and bay leaf and making a beard oil and a skin balm for gentlemen. And this will be doing just a little mini men's release for Father's Day in July. And while this will be part of my salty seaside collection, because I am running low on some of my more manly scents, um, I will be doing a Father's Day release. Well, actually, my summer release and Father's Day are right at the same time. I always forget that Father's Day is in June. So I will also have this scent in a beer oil and a skin balm. And I will have one other, probably my gray, which gray is a dupe um, of Fifty Shades of Gray. I can't remember off the top of my head who does that, but it's a it's more of a cologne mask, you know, more of a cologne scent. And then I will have one other soap. Oh, my Glacier Ice, which is a cool water dupe. So I will have my Hundred Acre Wood, which is an essential oil soap, which is more like cedar wood, patchouli, more earthy. This tobacco and bay leaf, and then my two, which are a little bit more cologne gray and glacier ice for Father's Day. So again, just kind of getting this stirred in. It's weird, I normally soap using the heat transfer method, but I have so many batches of soap, and I just, we had friends over last night, we did a big taco bar, and we played a bunch of games, and so I didn't have time to like full on soap yesterday, so I went ahead and did the, the master batch method. Um, and then I'm making some soap today. If you caught my other video with my sea moss soap, which I still need help naming, I was going to make a whole bunch of batches of soap today, but due to it just being an absolutely fabulous day, our family is, my family, is going to go out and do some stuff. more to make for the summer collection. So right now this soap is just lightly emulsified. If you're still learning about soap and soap making, emulsify is just when the oils and the butters have mixed with the lye solution and they're combined enough it's not really any trace it's just emulsified and if you wanted to if you were using a lot of colors or a fragrance that didn't behave very well or you wanted to do intricate designs this would be a good time to portion off your batter when it's just lightly when it's emulsified so that way you can continue to mix and blend and, and stick blend and stuff like that um, for your soap if you're portioning it out this is just going to be one color, so I'm going to try to get it a little bit thicker. i got to get those air bubbles out, and I know it's shaking the camera. I'm sorry. setup and 
which I love. I, I love watching those types of videos. I'm just a simple soaper, just putting these videos out just so you can see how it's done, maybe learn something. Um, I do this side job part-time. It's just me. I have a full-time job, <laughs> which I know many of you do. <laughs> claim them to be fancy. It's just me. Alright, we are still just now at a light tray, so I'm going to stick blend some more. I'm going to put you on pause while I do this because it could take a little while. So, I'm going to add my spinach powder here because I've reached a light medium trays. So add my spinach powder and French green clay. I'm using these two uh, to color the soap as natural colorant, but also for the benefits that they bring, the vitamins, the minerals. As I said in my last video, I know soap is a quote unquote wash off product, which it is, but it does get into your skin. I mean, your pores are open. And when you're scrubbing, you're, you know, you're using a washcloth or a loofah or a sisal bag or 100% cotton bag. You know, you're gently exfoliating your skin. These pores are open and the stuff does get into your, into your skin that way. So while it is a wash off product, you still reap the benefits of these things that a soaper put in the soap. And you also not reap, but suffer the consequences of using, I'm not trying to be ugly and not mass made soaps, but those are usually full of detergents and a lot of synthetic ingredients. And those just aren't good. They build up in your system over time. So let's give this a quick blend. <laughs> stores up it builds up in our bodies it gets into our systems especially when we're you know putting all kinds of things on our skins daily that have synthetic um, ingredients and fake ingredients it, it builds up in our systems over time and it disrupts our hormones it um, can cause problems with different systems in our bodies and that's why it's really important to take note of what you're putting on your skin and what you're putting in your body and that's the great thing about handcrafted soap is we control what's put in here. And I use, you know, natural things like shea butter and cocoa butter and olive oil and castor oil and um, sodium tallowate, which is a blend of animal fats, which is very commonly used in um, all types of, of soap making. It's very sustainable. It's very eco-friendly. It's very cost-effective. It's fabulous for your skin. Um, I also use colloidal oatmeal, tussa silk, goat milk. I mean, these are all just wonderful natural things that are just great for your skin. So we are doing good getting out of good trace here. I'm going to blend this a little bit longer. of this black Hawaiian black salt. Super excited about this. First time I've ever used this. So let's give it a whirl. Get it down in there, give it a whirl. Sometimes this can just be really futile <laughs> to clean the stick blender off. Sometimes I don't know why. I do. <laughs> okay, let's clean. 
clean up the mess that I have created so far. I tried to soak super clean, tried not to make a mess. All right, I'm using a five pound tall and skinny mold. I got this from Be Scented. Her husband, I think his name is Eric, is an amazing woodworker. But I don't think they're making them right now. They're so busy with be said to growing and everything. But love this this mold. Now let's see if I can try to pour this in here without making too much of a mess. I love these containers when I prep my butters and oils. But they're not really good for pouring. And there we go. This fragrance oil does behave really well. And it actually seemed to, now that it, I'm, it's in here, it seems to have reversed my trace a little bit. I thought it was thicker than it was. I'm not complaining, by no means. Just a little note, if you're using this from Brambleberry, tobacco and bay leaf. It works really well in cold process. No problems, no racing, no acceleration. They've actually decelerated. Because I was hoping to get my top texture right away and get on with my day. Try to get all this out of here. So we have less mess to clean. Go over here and tap this down. And there we have it. Tobacco and bay leaf. I'm trying to decide, you know, I don't really think I'm going to do too much of a texture. I'm not going to wait till it gets really thick and it's just a nice basic bar I don't think I need to do anything fancy to it I actually may just try to smooth this back out yep I think I'm just gonna leave it just like that guys all right, thanks for watching. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook, Sassy Goat Soaps.